Hi, I'm your Minna Van Dyken MD. I'm a surgeon by trade, but my true passion is helping people just like you obtain optimum health by adopting a whole foods, plant-based lifestyle. We are here at this beautiful heiau, which is an ancient Hawaiian temple or worship site on Maui, Hawaii. Today, I want to talk about flax seeds. More specifically, let's talk about flax seeds and colon cancer prevention. Colon cancer is the third most common type of cancer diagnosed in the United States. Overall, the lifetime risk of developing colorectal cancer is about 1 in 22 for men and 1 in 24 for women. There's some risks for colon cancer that we can change, and there's some that we cannot change. Things that we cannot change, we'll start with those, we call them non-modifiable risk factors are our ethnicity, our age, people over 50 years have a higher risk of colon cancer, history of inflammatory bowel disease, and family history, or our, our genetics, which I argue may or may not influence your risk of colon cancer depending on the choices you make throughout your life. Things for sure that are modifiable that can increase our risk of colon cancer are a high body mass index or BMI, physical inactivity, a diet high in saturated fat and low in fiber, low fruits and vegetables, smoking, and heavy alcohol consumption. So back to the flax. Flax seed is a nutrient dense, fiber rich food. It has a super high fiber content. It's also rich in omega-3 fatty acids, flavonoids, and phytoestrogens as well as other bioactive compounds. Let's take a look at 100 grams of flaxseed. That's about 10 tablespoons or a small handful. 100 grams of flaxseed has a whopping 20.3 grams of protein, 37 grams of fat, 29 grams of carbohydrates, and a total of 530 calories. It's a nutrient-dense food. Flaxseed also contains fiber, ALA, lignans, and other dietary polyphenol compounds. These are the compounds that are thought to give us protection against colorectal cancer. The main ways that they do this are by reducing transit time, reducing gut microbial dysbiosis, reducing cell proliferation, inflammation, and oxidative stress, while altering the colon cell's membrane structure and function. Let's talk about the fiber first. We all know the standard American diet, or SAD diet, is a fiber deficient diet. Meat and dairy products do not contain fiber. Therefore, the majority of people eating a standard diet are severely deficient in fiber. Why do we care about fiber? Check out some of my other videos on fiber and the microbiome for more details on that. But basically, there's two types of dietary fiber, soluble and insoluble. Insoluble dietary fiber acts as a bulking agent and decreases transit time through our intestines. Soluble dietary fiber consists of a class of complex carbohydrates that are resistant to digestion in the small intestine. So they pass through the small intestine largely untouched. Then. They're fermented by our bacteria in the colon, our microbiome. So really, the fiber that we eat is food for our bacteria and the microbiome, not so much for us. These fibers get fermented by our bacteria into short-chain fatty acids, which are anti-inflammatory and have numerous health benefits. Bare minimum fiber intake should be 38 grams per day for men and 25 grams per day for women. This is according to the US government. I personally would recommend much, much more. When it comes to colon cancer, dietary fiber is thought to reduce the risk through several mechanisms, mostly through stool bulking, shortening transit time, and fermentation into short-chain fatty acids. If you think about it, stool, our solid waste, has carcinogens in it. So if you bulk up your stool with fiber, the carcinogens are theoretically more diluted. Then if you decrease transit time, meaning if our stool passes through our colons quicker, the amount of time our colon cells are exposed to potential carcinogens is decreased, so that lowers your cancer risk. Okay, let's talk about alpha-linoleic acid from flaxseed and how it relates to colon cancer. We call it ALA for short. So ALA is one of two essential fatty acids, an omega-3 fatty acid. The other essential fatty acid, LA, or linoleic acid, is also found in high concentrations in flaxseeds, in case you were wondering. ALA can be converted to longer chain fatty acids like EPA and DHA. ALA is a powerful anti-inflammatory and it decreases cellular oxidative stress. Animal models have shown that flaxseed reduces tumor size in several cancers, including colon cancer. Lignans are the last major group of chemicals found in flaxseeds that are thought to contribute to prevention of colon cancer. Lignans are polyphenolic compounds that are found in fiber-rich plant foods. 
Compared to other plant sources though, flaxseed contains 75 to 100 times more lignans. Our bacteria convert lignans to enterolignans, which are a useful compounds. These compounds do things like cause tumor growth suppression, induce apoptosis, decrease cell proliferation. By the way, random factoid, the highest blood concentration of enterolignans ever reported so far in the literature exceeded one micromole per liter. That's a huge amount, and guess what? It was found in the blood of a vegan postmenopausal woman. Enterolignans have been shown to suppress colon tumor cell growth in animals. But what about in humans? Well, high enterolignan levels were associated with a lower risk of colon cancer and a lower risk of precancerous lesions in this study. In separate research, lignans appear to confer anti-cancer colon protection prior to development of colon cancer. There's some other bioactive compounds found in flaxseed that are phenolic and found to reduce colon cancer risk. Two of these substances are called paracumeric acid and ferulic acid. They've been shown to decrease colon cancer in animal studies. Scientists are just starting to look at these compounds in humans, so we don't have much data on that yet, but more to come in the future on this. Okay, so let's wrap it up. Consumption of flaxseed demonstrates chemopreventive properties when it comes to colon cancer. A few words on flaxseed consumption though. In order to get the soluble fiber, the ALA, the lignans, and other polyphenols, the flaxseed must be ground. And then, to complicate things, it must be ground fresh. If it's ground and stored, we risk the essential fatty acids going rancid or spoiling. The only exception to this, you could grind a bunch of flaxseed fresh and then the flaxseed could be stored in the freezer. I would recommend, though, grinding fresh immediately before consumption. So how can this be done? Many people use a coffee grinder dedicated for that purpose. Other people like me, well, they just throw a handful of flaxseed in their morning smoothie and that does the job. The blender grinds it up. There's many options when it comes to this, so be creative. Well, that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. I really hope you learned something valuable and applicable to your individual health journey. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna show us some real support, subscribe. We love hearing from you, so please comment down below with any thoughts about the video, um, tips, tricks for how you eat your flaxseed. Also, let me know what you want to learn more about in future videos. Thanks for watching, everybody. Until next time, aloha.